Okay, we'll call the meeting to order. Will you please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? Okay, the first item on our agenda today is a special um, presentation. It's a proclamation to our Clayton do, Parks Commission. Oh, I'm, roll call. Oh, yeah. <laughs> first item is roll, roll call. <laughs> Mr. Bachman? Here. Henning? Here. Gorman? Here. Merkel? Here. Kelly? Here. Lieberman? Here. And Stevens? Here. We're all present. What they did Sorry about that. I was mayor that night. Mike. Yeah, they <laughs> always picking on us. What's up with that? Okay, so we are going to have a, a special presentation tonight. Um, it's a proclamation for our, our Clayton Park Commission. And I want to say um, uh, this is long overdue, but um, thanks to Mr. Henning, this was his suggestion, but it's, um, we're real proud of what our parks do, do and uh, you guys put on a lot of events, and it's a lot of hard work. So. Okay, if I could have all the members of the Parks Commission that are present here today come up. Again, we want to sincerely thank you folks for the stuff that you do. Uh, you put on a lot of events, you've planned a lot of things and given our residents a lot of um, really great events and it just it really adds to the quality in, of life and value here in Clayton so we do appreciate that. So I'm going to read the proclamation as it's written. The Parks Advisory Commission has dedicated untold amount of volunteer hours promoting the natural beauty and recreational benefits of the Clayton community by creating numerous outreach events for the entire community to enjoy throughout the calendar year. The Parks Advisory Commission has created special events which have become an annual traditions for the community's youth, memories which are suited to last a lifetime. The Parks Advisory Commission has successfully collaborated with a cross-section of dedicated Clayton and Northmont businesses to provide free entertainment and refreshments for families and residents of all ages at programs throughout the year. The Parks Advisory Commission organizes annual cleanup events in all of Clayton Parks to ensure all of Clayton's green spaces continue to look fantastic for families to enjoy. The Parks Advisory Commission has sponsored several new planting initiatives throughout the entire Clayton Park system, assisting with the Clayton Service Department in their continual efforts to replace aging landscaping and brush areas with new vibrant upstarts. The Parks Advisory Commission is a shining reason why the Clayton community continues to be ranked as the best community to raise a family in Montgomery County. We honor the Parks Advisory Commission members by naming the Sunday before Labor Day Parks Advisory Commission Day. We hope the residents in the entire Clayton and Northmont community will enjoy all of the Clayton parks and playgrounds while also realizing the continual and vast list of improvement projects currently being implemented across the Clayton Park landscape, all of which are directly inspired by these folks right here, the Clayton Parks Advisory Commission. I'm Mike Stevens, Mayor of the City of Clayton, Ohio, and the elected and appointed officials of the city wish to acknowledge the dedication, efforts, and talents of each member of the City of Clayton Parks Advisory Commission. So again, we all want to thank you for the work that you guys do. So. We do have a certificate for each of you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that. Good. You get a group picture with the mic up front too, like right here. 
Can you get a group up here? We appreciate all of you. Okay. Thank you. Oops. Thank you very much. Oh, wait a minute. We said go up there. I was going to say, because we're going to be on a Earl. stand. Earl. I know. We're going to give you this. I'm taller. I'm taller. You get a little, spe <laughs> little special. Some of us are really tall. <laughs> hey, thanks. I appreciate you. It's just my time to speak. Or what? Yeah, let's Oh, you want to speak? Yeah, oh, heck sure. Yeah, I'm of ready. course I can. Yeah. I'm also okay. You, you think I'm gonna pass up a time? I know you're. I know you're shy. Look, he's got notes. All I, all, all I want to say is, uh, you know, Sunday is going to be a big day for Clayton. Uh, it's a, it's a free. Everything is free. We've got 700 hot dogs. Coming, we got we got popcorn. We're going to be popping at three thirty. Uh, we'll do about uh, three or four great big black bags full. Uh, then we're going to uh, uh, have the fireworks at nine o'clock. We got jumpy houses coming. Jack's got both those coming. Snow cones. Uh, uh, see cotton candy, potato chips, hot dogs, and water. Fireworks at nine o'clock. Around nine o'clock, and um, we put. Uh, our uh, sister city up the street to shame with our fireworks. So if you don't, if you don't get over there to see them, that's your fault. But uh, this is, I still have, uh, yeah, three more, three more that's on my crew. And I want to say ladies, and I'll catch up for my daughter, but this, this is the workforce. We go there to have fun and we go to have fellowship with everybody in the community. So if you see, and when you come there on the 4th, just come over and pat them on the back a little bit because they work hard. These, these, these ladies work hard. My coworkers, that's how I'm supposed to say it. One of the coworkers? <laughs> right. Okay, okay. I can talk all night long. I mean, <laughs> we got a lot of, we, we got a lot of good things coming to the parks. You're going to have uh, pickleball coming. It's, uh, according to uh, Randy here, it's uh, looking like it might be a first of next year, but it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm, I'm watching television and watch, watching it being played, and uh, the emphasis on it is so great. We got golf, regular golf, and we got disc golf. So how can you beat that? And then our parks are really looking good. Uh, our, our park down off of Westbrook, or down on uh, Levon Court, uh, then we're starting to put the asphalt down, and it's going to be gorgeous in that park. Got a few trees to take down, but that's nature. But anyhow, the other parks are all looking pretty good. We get the, the uh, bathrooms next year done at, at Westbrook Park. Uh, that'll bring that park up to, to uh, perfect. So. It's, it's a lot of labor we do and a lot of thinking we're trying to do. We're trying to keep the, the golf course uh, every month with something new. We've got senior citizen centers coming. We're going to do every month to do our senior citizens. And then in February, we're coming back with over popular the dance party again. Yes. And if you miss that, I'm going to get out and dance myself. <laughs> But anyhow, that it turned out really good, and, and uh, people get a chance to see our. We've got a beautiful golf course. We've got a beautiful building, and it's time we use it right, and we push it along and get a lot of people to rent and stuff like that, keep it going, and make Clayton proud. So let's get out here, girls. Let's get this done. Good job.
Okay, thanks again to those folks. Uh, they really do a fantastic job, and again, it just add a lot to our city. Uh, so our, we have a second presentation tonight. Um, we have uh, Mr. Mark Gavin from Power Clean Future Ohio. Step up, and the floor is yours, sir. Um, hello, good evening. Uh, thank you for having me, Mr. Mayor, uh, Council, and uh, leadership and staff. I really appreciate being here tonight. Uh, my name is Mark Gavin Sr. I'm the Campaigns Director of Power Clean Future Ohio. And I work on energy aggregation, uh, specifically around renewable aggregation in, the, in uh, communities throughout the state. Uh, I know that you all have already taken a really great first step in pitting aggregation on the ballot. That's awesome. That's amazing. And I know that a lot of your neighbors are seeing big savings, especially Dayton. And I want to make sure that you all can see those same savings and also do some good for your community and the rest of the state by going renewable. Um, so I'm going to... Um, I, I do want to preface this with uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about PCFO, Power Clean Future Ohio, first, just a bit about who we are, uh, and then I'm going to dive into uh, aggregation and uh, what we want to do in your city. Uh, but I will say that we are uh, really ready to spend $22,000 to make sure that your initiative passes as long as you are going to, as long as you plan to go renewable. So we are really excited for this opportunity for you all and for ourselves too. Um, so if you have the packet here, the uh, first page, uh, just a little bit about PCFO. Uh, we launched in February 2020. Uh, so we've been around for almost three years now. We're a newer organization, though. Uh, we are a uh, 501c3 nonprofit, uh, and we view ourselves as a resource for communities. That's really all we are. Uh, we don't charge communities for anything. We are, f we are free. Um, you'll see at the bottom of your page, it says... Um, is is to join PCFO, local elected officials need to pass a resolution or uh, having ex the executive make an official uh, commitment. Uh, I'm not here today to ask you to join Power Clean Future Ohio. Uh, I might come back at another point in the near future to do so. You don't have to do that to enjoy uh, our resources for the aggregation campaign. Uh, so I do want to let that be known now, but I would love for you all to join Power Clean Future Ohio and I'll tell you a little more about us. So the next few pages you'll see are actually uh, a lot of our member organizations. Uh, if you know some of these orgs, they're big national orgs, and others are small local ones throughout the state. So you'll see like ACE, Alliance for Climate Education. They are a big, massive national organization. Then you also see Sustainable Delaware. That's just Delaware, Ohio, like 40 minutes north of Columbus. With only about 40,000 people there. So like big organizations, small organizations, mid-sized ones, most of them though based here in Ohio uh, and not necessarily centralized to Columbus. And as we get through our coalition, members. Uh, just want to talk a bit about our goals as Power Clean Future Ohio. Uh, we want to make sure that we are uh, reducing costs for local governments, businesses, and residents. Uh, we also want to make sure that we're growing the clean energy economy in Ohio. Uh, Southern Ohio specifically is primed for about $80 billion worth of investment in renewable energy sectors, but we need to make sure that... <laughs> we just want to make sure that we are, um, it's always weird hearing your own voice, right? Um, we just want to make sure that um, we are, um, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, we want to make sure that we are doing everything that we can to uh, move Ohio in that direction so that we can enjoy that $80 billion worth of investment, and especially here in southern Ohio, uh, in clean energy. As long as we have the demand, it'll come. Uh, and we want to uh, implement uh, equ equitable clean energy policy. Um, with input from across the community and across the state. We want to make sure that we're not just coming into your community and saying, hey, here's how we do things, uh, but also that we're taking your input and we're working very closely with uh, not only city council and the mayor, but also working closely with you know community groups and uh, just citizens who are involved in your community. Uh, Power Clean Future Ohio, as of uh, late last week, we are up to 37 different Ohio communities that have joined. And once again, these communities are, are uh, as small as Lancaster, Ohio, and as large as Cleveland and Columbus. Uh, those, these are some of our um, um, 
So, so we, we kind of expand the gambit there when it comes to size. Uh, we work with anyone in, uh, with any community, whether they're a small village or a major, major city. And now I will jump a bit into uh, community choice aggregation. I know that uh, council has been uh, pretty well briefed on CCA, so I don't want to do a, a lot of uh, review for you all. But I do want to just uh, say a bit, uh, aggregation gives local governments the power of collective bargaining for better terms on energy and can be used for gas, electricity, or both. Uh, it's a well-established policy tool in 10 states with uh, seven others considering. I think we're actually about eight now. And um, it's very prominent here in Ohio. Uh, it's been the law of the land since 1999. And uh, hundreds of communities have used it. I think we're maybe over 450 right now, maybe, maybe close to 500. I can't remember exactly how many communities are aggregated in Ohio, but it's a, it's a ton of communities. Um, and as we know, uh, with community ag aggregation, there is a source where we are buying and building on electricity supply. So uh, there might be um, you know, solar in some location uh, that may or may not be in Ohio, but we're going to buy that energy, and then it'll be delivered to you locally through, um, through your, who already does your, uh, your uh, sorry, I'm blanking on the word, your electricity. Um, so it'll be delivered to you through your current electricity provider. Your bill doesn't change, nothing, like your bill is gonna change just a hair, but you're gonna get the same bill from the same company. Outside of that, nothing else changes, and it just gets to your homes. So you don't notice the lights flicker when things change over anything else. Why aggregate for 100% renewable energy? Uh, you can lock in competitive, uh, frequently, uh, competitive frequently money saving electric rates. Uh, you can see that uh, with your neighbors in Dayton, they're uh, definitely saving a lot of money in Dayton right now. Uh, you can make the city uh, all, that more, all that more attractive to future generations. Uh, my wife and I, we bought our first home about a year ago in Grove City, Ohio, and this was one of our major factors in finding a house. Uh, I'm 32, she's 27, and we wanted to make sure that we were living somewhere that had access to renewable energy because we know areas like that are prone to grow and uh, we want we want to make sure we have the best resources for our children and uh, we want to we want more and more businesses to come into your community that uh, more businesses they really have sustainability goals and they want to be in communities that can meet those sustainability goals or at least mirror the goals that they have and obviously we want to do our part to address the climate the climate emergency um, you know I'm sure that we're often a little hotter uh, this September 1st than we have in the past, so we just want to make sure that we are uh, leaving a better, uh, you know, a better world for our children, grandchildren. Um, so there's strong support for um, for action. Uh, there's strong support for action by the government on renewable energy. Um, it really appeals to people from the ages of 18 to, to 44, especially they are willing to pay, uh, you know, up to $20 more a month for renewable energy. Um, now, that said, that doesn't necessarily mean that they will have to pay $20 more a month. I can't guarantee anything on price, but what I can say is that there are massive savings to be had across the state right now on renewable energy. Um, and then... You know, uh, Central Ohioans, and sorry, that's just Central Ohioans, this uh, power slide, PowerPoint got a little messed up and wonky this week, but um, Central Ohioans uh, have constantly chosen uh, to vote in support of aggregation. So uh, Columbus, um, you know, it's a heavily Democratic city, went 76%, uh, Worthington 75%, and where I live, Grove City, went 63%, and Grove City is a pretty Republican town. Um, aggregation uh, for 100% renewable energy is the single most effective way uh, that a municipality or a local government can affect uh, can affect their carbon emissions. You can drop them by up to 30%. If you do go down, if, if you do decide to aggregate for 100% renewable energy, you can drop your carbon emissions by 30%, uh, which is a really, really massive boon for uh, not only our environment, but also for your economy because people are going to want to come here. Um, Depending on how you run the program, you can also um, you may also be able to get grants. Uh, many aggregators in our state do give out grants to their uh, member communities. I know there's organizations like a SOPEC back here who does that. Uh, so that's a massive benefit to add. There have been communities that have done things like uh, install solar charging stations or even um, um, they, they've done um, 
Oh, geez, I'm so sorry. I'm blanking so bad tonight. But uh, solar charging stations or um, also, um, you know, fleet assessments, just different things like that, that they can use uh, these grants for. And uh, also it builds on uh, the sustainability efforts of your community. And like I said earlier, uh, we want to make sure that we can create good jobs in Ohio, especially Southern Ohio. There's a really, really great, um, you know, opportunity for us to build out the um, new economy when it comes to renewable jobs here in the state. We have a very strong manufacturing base in the state. And, um, you know, it would be a shame to let that go to waste as the world changes. And we don't want to leave Ohio behind. So how can PCFO help your community? So um, we have a committed budget for Clayton right now, as long as you all decide to go renewable. And um, that is a $22,000 budget uh, to get this across the finish line at the ballot this November. Uh, so what that'll pay for, there's community education. Uh, so that's community, ta community event tabling. So if, um, you know, I would love to work with the city on this to find the different events in your community. But, you know, we will send people out to, you know, sit down and like really talk to the community here. Uh, neighborhood organizing, uh, we believe, uh, we don't believe in sending people from the outside to like talk to everyone in the neighborhood. We like to build relationships and have neighbors talk to neighbors. And so we plan to do that here as well. Uh, the neighborhood organizing aspect of it, we want neighbors talking to neighbors. I, the last thing that I, that I want is anyone feeling uncomfortable because someone came from Columbus or Cleveland to knock on their door. I want it to be someone who's, you know, a friend, a neighbor. And um, information sessions. So we plan to host at least one, if not four, information sessions in the city uh, where we uh, bring in more experts on aggregation and, and give a deep dive on aggregation and 100% renewable energy. So, um, so that the community can feel informed, they can ask questions. It's not a quick conversation at the doors. They can really come in and sit down for an hour and a half and learn more and ask questions. Um, as far as communications are concerned, uh, we'll make uh, we'll obviously give you all local guidance. Um, you know what 100% renewable energy would do for your community, how it would change your community, and uh, how you can press, push that information out. Uh, we'll create a website. Uh, we'll do digital outreach, so this looks like uh, more or less ads uh, that are targeted in your community, and uh, yard signs. Uh, we also plan to send three flights of direct mail to every uh, registered voter in the city. Uh, we want to make sure that we're covering all of them, at least via mail. I'm not sure we'll get to all of them on doors or at info sessions, but we want to make sure that we're at least getting every registered voter via mail. And once again, like I said, um, our budget is $22,000 for Clayton. We were really excited about this opportunity, and um, I'm here for any questions. Also, my contact information is on the back sheet there. You mentioned massive savings across the state of Ohio and the renewable energy. Can you give me an example of one? Yeah, um, once again, Dayton's a great example. I'm sure you've heard this one already. Uh, they're paying, uh, what, 7.457 cent per kilowatt hour against uh, the AES standard rate of, what is this, um, I think 10.31 cent per kilowatt hour, if I remember those numbers correctly. So um, th that's a really big savings right there. But I know other communities like, um, Logan, Ohio, for instance, they're paying five dollars, or I'm sorry, five five point three six um, five point three six cent per kilowatt hour. So not five dollars, but five point three six cent per kilowatt hour, and um, and that's against that same standard offering. So um, like literally pennies, uh, uh, um, like so it's a, a massive amount. So imagine going down from you know ten dollar or ten cent per kilowatt hour to five and a half essentially. So there definitely are savings there. So Mark, <clears throat> excuse me. So just for clarification, for um, Power Clean Future Ohio to come in and help the city of Clayton, we would have to commit 100% to green energy. So with that, <clears throat> if we were to do that, our residents wouldn't get a choice whether they wanted to do brown energy or green energy. It would have to be green energy. Correct. Well, I have a question on the the green energy because that's the part that I that I really like about your presentation here. So, doesn't the energy that you would be essentially, I think, billing for, doesn't that still come from AES? 
So AES, yeah, they move it for us. They're they they're not for us, but for you rather. They basically they are the intermediary. They're the middleman now under aggregation. So is AES a green company? Uh, no. So how how does how do we get electricity from them, which we're getting now? How is it considered renewable from them? You know, from their so, the source, which is AES. You know, to my house. Yeah. Where's so, the green? In it? Where's the green part come in? Yeah, that's a great question. So there's something called renewable energy credits or RECs. So essentially, your community would work with your aggregator to buy these RECs, um, and the RECs mean this energy maybe was produced in a different state. They bought the rights to it, and now they're using that here. Um, now that said, part of why it's so important to get more and more communities in Ohio to go renewable is because we need to build up that actual infrastructure to have locally generated power in Ohio. We need to make sure that, that there is the demand for it. Um, so yeah, I mean, essentially to answer your question, you're basically buying the rights to renewable energy, but AES is delivering the same load to you for now. I guess it would make more sense if you were like here trying to sell us windmills, you know, or something like I that. Know. I get that. <laughs> I understand that part, but I don't, un I don't, I don't get the renewable part. You know, if we're still going to be the same supplier, I mean, it, look, it looks to me like I, I don't mean no disrespect. I'm trying to figure this out, uh -huh. but it seems to me like you know your company is taking over the billing, basically at least for now, and maybe in the future, you know, you build a windmill somewhere. So is that what you're saying? So well, we're not taking on any billing. Uh, once again, we're, we're a nonprofit. We have a staff of five people, two part-time folks. Uh, we're not taking on anyone's electricity bill. Uh, essentially, what we're, we are acting as like just a resource for your community to make sure that this passes at the ballot. Uh, but that said, uh, yeah, when it comes to when it comes to that renewable energy generation, it's, just, it's not going to happen in a large way in Ohio until there's more communities that demand it, um, and that, that's what makes this this uh, tough uh, sell sometimes because their communities like, well, I'm still getting brown power. It's like, well, yeah, for now, but eventually, like. Our, our politicians in Columbus, they know the um, they know that the impact that renewable energy can have on this state. They really do. And so but they're not going to move on it in a good, fair way until they see more and more communities who actually ask for it and desire it. Are you aggregating the cost of renewable energy or what? I mean, I think I'm a little confused, too, as far as what you're actually trying to do. Uh, yeah, Councilwoman. So I, um, once again, I'm just a resource. I'm not here to aggregate the cost or aggregate the energy. I want to make sure that you, I mean, you all have already taken that first step to aggregate your energy. Um, but when it comes to, when it comes to cost, I mean, aggregation gives you all the actual uh, power to, to bargain on those, on cost, on, on sources, um, you know, on other terms like grants, like I mentioned before. The aggregation gives your community that actual power, that authority to bargain. Um, personally, I just want to. I want to make sure that it passes here. I just want to make sure that we see that happen. I have no actual like stake in this. I don't get paid any extra if you guys aggregate or you don't aggregate. If you go green, you don't go green. Uh, I just want to stay in Ohio my whole life, and I want it to be safe and healthy for my family. So, Mark, <clears throat> I just want to make sure that I'm understanding, and maybe this will help counsel, and you can correct me if I'm wrong. So the purpose of Power Clean Future Ohio, at least it sounds to me, is to build that critical mass. So we have all of these communities who are now saying that we want clean energy in Ohio. So then we can start to get producers in Ohio to create the clean energy, correct? Correct. Do I have that correct? Yes. So the purpose of you coming here tonight to talk to city council and to offer your services to get this aggregation across the finish line is so that Clayton will commit to being 100% green to help build that critical mass. Correct. Okay. I have one more comment um, about the about the cost. Again, I'm I'm trying to educate myself on the on the fly here. Of course. So I would be really open to this aggregation because right now I'm neutral on it. And I got to say, I, I I just don't know enough about it. Um, I would be really in favor of this if if you would come in and say I'm with X company 
and we can always provide you the lowest rates. But what I don't want to do is I, I don't think it's I don't think it's something I'll just speak for myself. It's not something I want to take on to have to renegotiate every year because if if you or another company you know or other aggregate company would come here and say, you know, yeah, you're paying five cents this year, but next year it's eleven cents. I don't want to have to renegotiate every year, you know, with a with a different company and. Uh, I'd really like it if you would say, hey, we'll give you the five cents, and if the, you know, if AES is five cents next year, we're doing four cents. You know, that would get me on board right away. So, so I'll, I'll say this, once again, we're not aggregators at all, like, that's not, not what we do, uh, but it's, it, if any aggregator ever comes to you and says, we can be the lowest cost, they're lying to you. Like, that's just bottom line. They, no one can guarantee that. Um, but what they can say, they can show you their history, they can show you where they're at right now, uh, but no one can say, hey, for the next five years, we're gonna make sure we beat AES. They, they just can't do that. Um, but with that said, you once again you can always renegotiate but only outside of only when your contract is coming up for renewal so basically what happens is you, most aggregation contracts are two to three years long and i would say within a year to six month window six month a year window at the end there that's when that renegotiation starts but also other aggregators are going to come knocking at your door so you'll hear you'll hear pitches from you know um agents from different companies, you'll hear pitches from Council of the Government, like SOPEC, you'll hear pitches from a ton of different uh, organizations, nonprofit, for-profit, but ultimately, uh, is going to be up to you and your community on what you decide to go with. And and trust me, you do want that flexibility, though. You don't want to be locked into, like, oh, we have the, well, no one can guarantee the lowest rate, but you don't want to be locked into something that says these are our people. You want to make sure that you can that you can be flexible when those contracts end anyways. So, and, and really any aggregator is going to have contracts that have terms to them. So it's not going to be every year. It's going to be every two to three years, most likely. But um, still, that gives you a, a nice place to be nimble. And, um, you know, if your aggregator doesn't come to you when your contract's kind of coming up for renewal, you should probably go to them and say, hey, what's going on? Because maybe they don't have the lowest price. And that's why they're not knocking on your door. They're just hoping that you just stick with them, you know. So that was going to be my next question to Martina. So if we decide to go renewable, because it's less right now, but then AES says in two years they would be what type of, I mean, do we have to get this reapproved by the residents? Or once the aggregation passes, we, you always have those negotiating powers. Yeah, once the aggregation passes, you're good. And I think it, he's making a good point is that you're going to be locked in probably for a couple years and then you're going to have to renegotiate from that point. And that could be between renewable and brown. And we would probably go with what would be less for the residents. Yes, that would. Yes. I couldn't imagine saying, "Oh, we're going to go the more expensive route because, yeah." Right, and I mean, and that's one of the things that we need to take into consideration. I know Mark is offering the services of this this organization, but green energy may not always be the lower option. And if we, you know, off take their services, we're committing to one hundred percent green energy for how long? I'm assuming it would be indefinitely. Is so, so here's what I'll say. Um, what you have on the ballot right now just aggregates. That's all it is. Um, what, I, what I'm looking for right now is a commitment, uh, whether it's through a resolution to uh, go 100% renewable in this next contract, or I guess it would be your first contract, or you know, a commitment to join like a SOPEC, for instance. Like SOPEC, they have only provided 100% renewable energy to community, so we trust that they will continue doing that. So, you know, saying we'll, we will join SOPEC as a community or we will, um, you know, aggregate 400% renewable energy in this first contract, either of those can help. Uh, but no, I, there's nothing you can do to go back and change your ballot language, and I'm not asking you to do that either. So really, either of those, either of those options um, for our resources, essentially. And what happens if the renewable is more expensive than we're... I mean, the whole point of doing this so. was to have a lower rate. So part of what you can do there is you can always wait 
you don't have to immediately jump into a contract. You can always, you know, take bids and listen to folks. But some communities have waited a year or two years even before they've actually gotten to their first contract. You know, getting this uh, passed at the ballot just gives you the authority. So uh, it just gives you the, gives you the authority. There's no, you don't have to jump into anything. You don't have to rush into anything if you're not ready to, if you're not seeing the rights that uh, could apply to your community. Um, but I will say... Um, I, I would be pretty proactive in your search for uh, energy providers. There's definitely great ones, like I said before, SOPEC. Uh, they've, they've only produce, uh, only supply 100% renewable, um, but definitely be proactive. And I, um, yeah, I don't know, does that answer your question? Well, um, just kind of um, following up on what Kenny said, you know, it's, I mean, in his presentation, he said people are willing to pay more for re for green energy, which I, I would be, I'll just speak for myself, I would be also. So I don't think the whole issue is money. I think that's what, re that's what brought it to the table here, but I think it's a bigger issue than that. Uh, but I'm, again, I'm looking now at, you know, AES is our supplier and they're not green. And I, I just, I'm just thinking like how, how, what time frame are you looking at that we would be getting green, you know, truly green energy. I can't say that for sure. I really can, and I wish I could. But I, I think we're a little ways down the road from it. Uh, but there, there is some generation in Ohio, and there's more projects that hopefully will come online at some point. Um, it's not like there's no renewable energy in Ohio, but uh, there definitely needs to be a lot more. So I can't really – I am sorry I can't answer that question for you, Mr. Mayor, but uh, – I just got back, I drove through Kansas, and they have, they must have a million windmills out there. I mean, they are all over the place. And not yeah. that I really want that, but right. I mean, again, that's kind of what I'm yeah. envisioning as green or solar like we had talked earlier, so. Yeah, no, I, I get that. And, and also, just going back to the price conversation, too, once again, the, uh, renewable products, um, they have been known to be, be competitive and also beat, uh, like I said, the a AES standard rate, right, the standard offering there. So um, I definitely don't want you all getting too down on, like, you know, is it cheap energy or, you know, uh, green energy? They do, it doesn't have to be either or. It, it doesn't. It can be both. So, Mark, can I walk you through this just so I'm clear? Yes, sir. You're not an aggregate, right? Uh, in what way? Well. Aggregate. Oh, aggr oh, I'm aggregate. sorry. I thought you said advocate. Yeah. No, <laughs> no, you're definitely an advocate. You're not an aggregate. For what, sir? <laughs> so what, what you're asking us to do tonight, well, not necessarily tonight, but what your, your pitch is, hey, we'll um, help you get your ballot initiative passed and in exchange we just want you to commit to go with uh, the renewable energy uh, aggregates as opposed to brown aggregates is that is that basically what you're asking correct so that um, who that is who we go with is up to us correct okay I think I understand now. Thanks. No, of course. I've got just one thing. So is this something, if we don't commit to this now, because mind you, we're two months away from right. when this is on the ballot. So everything that you're talking about here, um, and would we have to change the language on the ballot? Okay. Um, it, let's say for now we say, no thanks on this. Obviously, then we would lose that $22,000 that you guys are of effort that you're putting forward here. Is this something, but well, let's say down the road, we say, okay, we do want to, you know, commit to this here. Obviously, it, that means it's already, if it's already passed on the ballot, I mean, is that something we can still get into down the road? Uh so I can't say that um, there there may be some there may be some resources um, just to like guide you like like one thing about being in PCFO if you do decide to become a power clean future Ohio community and I'll reach out to all of you more uh, about that later but uh, one thing about PCFO though is if you do join we offer tons of free resources and assistance so if you do need help getting into an aggregation contract even if you don't take our help now we can help you 
down the road uh, next year or the year after, whenever you do decide to get into a contract. But I, I would say if I were in your shoes, I would want this help here. And I, the reason why you're I said... Advocate, <laughs> well, you're advocating for it. So <laughs> no. obviously, yeah. so the, so, well, so basically, if, if we don't do this now, you're saying we might not have that opportunity with you down the road, even if we want it. Even if we're commit, if we're not comfortable with this right now, but we are in a couple of years, you're you're saying we wouldn't be able to to join up with with this. So so the way the budget is structured is structured around a political campaign. So basically, what that means is we wouldn't necessarily need that, or at least not to that extent. If you already aggregate it, but you decide to go green, like in two or three years after a contract, uh, you wouldn't really we wouldn't really need that same kind of money to get that done. Because you would you would already be aggregated, so we doesn't have to go back to the voters. We don't have to talk to the voters again about it. Well, right, but the aggregate, if if we pa if the aggregation passes in in November, it can be brown, it can be green here. But if we say in a few years we want to make we want to go all green and we want to join up, why wouldn't that's going towards your cause and that's going towards. You know, getting more com communities in Ohio for that, so I'm really not seeing why it's kind of a, a now it's an all or nothing is is what I'm getting from you. Well, because because those specific funds are for an uh, actual political campaign. If it's already passed, we well, don't have to go to the ballot, so the funds are, the funds look different. Also, um, th these these funds are just specifically for political campaigns to move aggregation forward. But like I said before, if you all do join PCFO as a community, we do have uh, technical resources. Uh, like I said, we have a staff of about five people right now, but we also have different consultants that we work with throughout the state to help to help community. So uh, it's not that there wouldn't be resources for your community, uh, but at the same time, you wouldn't actually need these same resources because this is all about voter outreach. Okay. Does that answer your question? Yes, sir. Thank you. Any other questions or comments for Mark? Go ahead. No. no. Greg, anything? No. I, I just guess for me, I don't know how many resources are out there for the clean energy, and that's where I'm back and forth with it, because at this point, I don't feel like we're there yet. And for me, I don't, I maybe in the future is something to look at, but cost savings wise, you know, I don't know if it's worth it. I don't know if it's going to be a cost savings. I, I, I'm just up in the air with it. And Americans will pay nearly $20 more. I don't know that that's accurate, and I don't know where the study comes from. So I'm just... Yeah. I'll make sure I send you all a copy of this, but um, and sorry, I didn't realize you all had uh, audio visual. Some, uh, some places do, some places don't, so I just printed it out to be safe. But I'll send you all a copy of this, and at the bottom, you'll actually see the uh, citation there. I think I know one of those is from the uh, Pew Research Center. I can't remember who the other study is from. But um, yeah, those I didn't just pull those numbers out of thin air for sure. Just to follow up on what, what uh, Tina had said, you know, we, we represent the citizens of the city from the standpoint, and this is going to be a utility cost that they will be paying. And I think that we need to be doing our due diligence and doing our representation and information gathering to prevent or present that information to them as far as the best information we can get to give them the best information since we're asking them to take this on as being a 100% commitment. Uh, not everybody can take on a and a more expensive utility bill as you know not everybody can take higher cost and they're going to be looking more for how can i save money you know everybody's trying to save money every every direction they can you know, otherwise we wouldn't be doing ag aggregation to begin with so i think we need to be doing our diligence in terms of finding the information as far as what the green energy costs would be and having that information as comparison to what other generation costs are from anybody else because that information is going to be what people ask going into the a, into a ballot issue well, essentially that's what you're asking as far as a a grouping to support or to, to try to push the initiative through on a ballot box and I'm not saying not to, to take your money as far as help um, but maybe some of the efforts that you're asking to provide would be best addressed or best put after the fact because we have to wait for this thing to pass. If it doesn't pass, then, you know, it's been nice talking to you. But if it does pass, 
okay? Now we have the opportunity to basically sit down with the people in the community essentially saying, here's, here's what we would like to do, give us your input. Because I think that's what we need is we need the citizens' input. Because if we put forth with something with a little information and then suddenly we're asking 15,000 other people to basically you know, support what our decision is, you know, we may see seven different people up here the next time there's an election. And um, you know, that's, that's the cost. But I want to do what's best for the people in the community. Yeah, and uh, um, thank you for that. I do understand that. I, I completely do. Um, and you know, one thing I've seen, I've seen some aggregation campaigns, both for renewable and not for renewable, at the ballot that we were not involved in, and um, they were pretty much just run by the city, and they weren't yes or vote yes on this. It was just like, hey, there's a campaign, go vote because uh, that's usually what municipalities can do. We're actually able to say, hey, go vote yes on this, and we can do that voter outreach, and we can do everything we can to make sure that this passes. Because I, I'll tell you this, uh, we only did one of these campaigns last year, and we did it down in uh, Portsmouth, Ohio, in Scioto County. Uh, that's coal country. It's literally across the river from Kentucky. Uh, we saw coal barges going across the Ohio River as we were down there. And uh, we, we lost that campaign by 23 votes, which was a really hard campaign to lose. But the county had also paid aggregation on the ballot, in, on the ballot that year. And uh, when counties do it, it's for all of the unincorporated territories, ter territories rather. And it was just for general, you know, aggregation. And when they did this, uh, the county they the county really came down on our messaging around renewable energy uh, really hard because they wanted to create a little distance between the two ballot initiatives, even though voters weren't going to see both of them. And what happened was that we lost ours by, I think it was 1.7%, and they lost theirs. And I cannot remember the number, but it was, it was double-digit percentage-wise. And mostly because they were not able to go out and do that messaging uh, to their community. They couldn't talk to voters directly. They couldn't go knock on doors. They couldn't send mail. They weren't able to do that. Uh, meanwhile, we were actually able to do that and do it multiple times to the same people in some instances. So I that's why I do stress, like, our help, not just because I think that we just do such a great job, but specifically because it means a lot to have those financial resources to push this forward. I know some communities uh, like Trotwood, uh, they I, I think they voted on this in 2016 and it failed, but they, you know, from what I understand, they didn't actually put a lot into it. Right now, we're in talks with Trotwood to do the same thing for them. Uh, we, we really want to push this through, especially in this region here. Um, I, I'm from Northeast Ohio. I feel like Southeast Ohio uh, in, in this region is a lot like where I'm from in the Youngstown area. And I feel like a lot of times we get ignored by the bigger nonprofits or bigger industries. And I, so yeah, I wanna see something like this happen in an area like this. And I want to make sure that you guys have the resources to do that. And if if there's no yes campaign, I can guarantee you this anyway, so there's gonna be a no campaign. So do you have a, a, a source of what the renewable energy cost, unit cost is over like the last year moving forward? Uh, I'm sorry, can you repeat that? Do you have some information that actually shows you know, over the past year what the unit costs for green energy costs have been? You know, like the supply costs that we get now from AES, you know, wherever your supplier is, I mean, it's on your utility bill. You know, so we have something we can actually sit down and actually compare with. So, so that's going to differ uh, between aggregator to aggregator and who, whoever could find you the best price. So I, I can't say for sure, but um, let me see what I can. Or if you have a resource that actually can provide that information so we can look it up ourselves as far as finding out what those costs are. And, and just know that those costs, uh, they're, they're going to shift too. But, yeah, let me see what I can find out for you. Any other questions or comments? No, I agree with Greg. We don't have anything to compare to, and that's hard to make a decision when you don't have anything to compare to. So, you know, I would just also add, <clears throat> I think the residents came to us to put this on the ballot. This wasn't a, I mean, this really wasn't our idea. We had residents come to the meeting and ask for it. Um, so they want this for lower rates. I want it for a lower rate. Ours went up by 50% or whatever. Um, so I just want to be very like careful of ensuring the group of residents that were here that want lower rates 
get that because that's what the community as a whole want. So, any other questions or comments? Hearing none. Okay. Well, thank you for coming in. We appreciate you. We appreciate the information. Thank you. Appreciate it. Best of luck to you on your campaign. Okay, so the next item on our agenda is a clerk's report. Okay, first you have before you the council workshop minutes of August 18th, 2022. I'll move for approval. Second. Motion by Mr. Gorman to approve as written. Second by Ms. Kelly. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Okay, that was unanimous. You also have before you the council meeting minutes of August 18th, 2022. I'll move for approval. Second. Motion by Mr. Gorman to approve. Second by Mr. Merkel. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Okay, thank you. And the next item is old business. Mayor, I'm sorry to interrupt. I have two items mm -hmm. to bring up to council. The first is a request to add resolution 09-2261 to tonight's agenda. And the purpose of that is to correct a previous resolution, which was 08-2258 uh, from August 18th. In that, there was a line item with respect to the general fund uh, appropriation amount for operating expenses that was indicated in that resolution as 67680 That should have been 67780 So the purpose of this resolution would be to correct that $100 differential, uh, which was a, a typing error in that one. Um, so we just need a motion, a second, and a vote to add that to the agenda. So moved. Second. Okay, motion to add resolution R092261 to our agenda tonight. Motion by Mr. Gorman, second by Mr. Bachman. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Okay, thank you. So, $100 difference. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I just want to make sure there's no. Yeah. yeah. Avoid That's, any issues with yeah. the auditor. So, I yeah. want to make sure we have a That's legislation exactly paper the right trail thing to, for exactly that. Exactly the right thing to do. Um, and then the second request is when I drafted up the new business for uh, this evening's meeting, which is the ordinances. Uh, 29, 30, 31, and then the two resolutions of 59 and 60. I inadvertently put the 08 for August on those instead of the 09 number uh, for September. So the request is simply just to take a voice vote to correct that 08 designation in each of those to an 09 designation. I'll move for approval. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Okay. Okay. I never make administrative mistakes, you know. So. Well, that was my it's first hard one for, as well. It's hard so. for me to, yeah, so. Okay, good, yeah. Okay, that's, those things are fixed. Uh, so the next thing on our um, agenda is old business. And we have, looks like six um, ordinances tonight. And it looks like they're all emergencies. So we read the first ordinance, please. Ordinance 0 08 21 an ordinance approving an amendment to the Clay Township City of Clayton Joint Economic Development District contract to remove specified parcels of real estate therefrom and declaring an emergency. Uh, Martina, she said 08. Those were introduced at the last meeting, okay. so the 08 category on those is correct. It's just the new legislation. Right. I, I move we approve the emergency. Second. Motion to approve the emergency by Mr. Gorman, second by Mr. Merkel. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? And is there a motion on the ordinance? So moved. Second. Motion by Mr. Lieberman, second by Mr. Bachman. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Okay, let the record show that's unanimous. Will you read the next ordinance, please? Ordinance 0 08 an ordinance to maintain lighting assessment and declaring an emergency. Move for the emergency. Motion to move for emergency by Mr. Merkel, second by Mr. Henning. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Let the show that. approve the motion. Second. Motion to approve the motion, or the motion to approve the ordinance by Mr. Gorman, second by Mr. Henning. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Okay, will you read the next ordinance, please? 
Ordinance 0082223, an ordinance authorizing the submission of the 2022-2023 North Clayton Community Authority charge assessments to the Montgomery County Auditor and declaring an emergency. I'll move for the emergency. Motion to move to an emergency sec by Mr. Gorman, second by Mr. Henning. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Okay, that's unanimous. Is there a motion for the ordinance? A move for approval. Second. Motion to approve as written by Mr. Lieberman, second by Ms. Kelly. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Okay, will you read the next ordinance, please? Ordinance 0082224, an ordinance certifying unpaid charges for nuisance assessments for 2022-2023 to the Montgomery County Auditor for collection with real estate taxes and declaring an emergency. I'll move to approve the emergency. Second. Motion to emergency by Mr. Gorman, second by Mr. Henning. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? I'll move for the ordinance. Second. Motion to pass the ordinance by Mr. Henning, second by Mr. Gorman. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Okay. That's unanimous. Will you read the next ordinance, please? Ordinance 0082225, an ordinance certifying unpaid charges for grass and weed cutting for 2022-2023 to the Montgomery County Auditor for collection with real estate taxes and declaring an emergency. Move for emergency. Motion to declare an emergency by Ms. Kelly, second by Mr. Henning. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? And Martina, the only question I have is, are you able to uh, check and see if we were able to increase fines for next year? Yeah, so I'd, uh, I had sent an email to council uh, a few days ago, I think. Uh, in essence, basically, those charges need to be online and reasonable with the expenses incurred by the city. So if you take that up to, let's say, you know, $200 for the first mo, 300 for the next, 500 for the next. I don't see where that's going to be reasonably related to the cost that, that the city is putting out. So at, at this point, I would not, and I did look at other cities, went back, because I looked at that last October, it came up then, went back and looked at other cities, and we were sort of right in there uh, at the reasonable amount that other cities are. So I wouldn't say like $100, but some type of increase for the cost of living that the employees are going to get and the increase in fuel I mean something yeah if there's an increase in fuel that we can uh, track with that then of course we could add that in but it's going to have to be reasonably related to the to the expenses that and the cost that the city puts out to mow those uh, uh, areas okay so, so like it, a 10% you know, increase would be reasonable well you'd have to look at it and see what the, ca the cost of the gas of the increase to the city has so I, I would look at, you know, before the gas price went up, what are we paying now, what have we paid before, and do a price comparison in order to see what's reasonable, because I don't know if 10 percent would, would accurately reflect that cost, uh, increased cost in gas or not. Okay. So Just so we can do something. Would that be a surcharge then? Yeah. Well, you could add it to, you could amend the codified ordinance to add that increase into it. That's what we would need to do. Okay, thank you. I just want to see some type of increase for next year. Okay, is, is there... Move we approve the motion. Excuse Second. me, the, the ordinance. Second. Motion by Mr. Gorman to approve as written. Second by Mr. Lieberman. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Okay, it's unanimous. And will you read the final ordinance, please? Ordinance 0082226. An ordinance to impose assessments upon owners of real property in arrears for payment of fees for waste hauling and disposal services for 2022-2023 and declaring an emergency. I'll make a motion to approve the emergency. Second. Motion to declare an emergency by Mr. Gorman, second by Mr. Merkel. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Okay. Is there a motion for the ordinance? So moved. Motion by Mr. Gorman to accept as written and second by Mr. Henning. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Okay. That passed unanimously also. Can I just ask uh, that we make a statement as to why these were all done as emergencies? Just so people don't think we were just running through things as quickly as possible. <laughs>
Those have to be down to the those have to be down to the county by Tuesday. So in order for them to become immediately effective, we have to declare them as emergency so they can get down to the county by the county's deadline. So they can be down on the tax duplicates in time for next year's tax correct tax collection. And does that help answer your because they had that same question why they were all emergency? Sure they thought we were, everything was a big emergency. <laughs> so did I when I first came too. So I'm right there with you on that. Okay, the next item on our agenda is a new business, and we read the first ordinance, please. And these are this is the first of two readings. Okay. Ordinance 0092229, an ordinance amending section 311.01 of the Clayton Codified Ordinance is entitled Placing in Injurious Material or Obstruction in Street. Mayor Council, Chief. Uh, staff is requesting City Council to add additional language to COC 311.01 to include snow. Um, if you look on the next page of your packets, we created a new subsection E, which includes snow and ice, and pushing it onto the street. It's going to be a minor misdemeanor. Again, this gives uh, something in our toolbox to uh, add, but I don't think we're going to be enforcing it a lot, only when necessary, but it does give us something um, to get compliance with. The reason why we're doing it, um, Public Service Director, Mr. Sanders, will explain. Yeah, we, we ran into a lot of issues uh, over the last couple of years, and it's only typically it's only during heavy snowfalls. And for you people that live my, out on the outskirts of town, know we make one pass, plowing the center lines up, get them, you know, get them cleaned up. Everybody's busy cleaning out their driveways, and, and then we come by and make that next pass and clean out that white line, and then, you know, a lot of unhappy people. And we've seen some residents, on, and mainly it's on our outskirt roads, we'll say Sweet Potato, Phillipsburg uh, Union, some of those, they'll actually push that snow, they get so frustrated, they'll shove it right out in the middle of the road. Um, and this is actual language that was added in some of the other cities and helped them deal with this, where they could say, hey, you know what, well, this is actually something that was passed in council, and you're not allowed to stuff it. Now, we already had an ordinance in place, if, if I'm correct, Martina, that dealt with other other it just didn't have the word and snow materials in it. it just didn't yeah. specifically mention snow and ice which some of the other city ordinances do some of them yeah. more general and the osp and that's in and, and, and of all the things i've seen the most dangerous thing you can get is a completely dry road and then have that pile of snow where somebody goes into a panic and has an accident and those and they're usually going a little faster too because the rest of it's always dry so those are things that we want to correct if we can and, it, and it, like Chief said, if you don't have to give a ticket, at least you can say, hey, you know what, this is in the ordinance, you know, we passed this, we've seen you do this once, don't continue to do it, because a lot of these guys are repeat offenders. And I've seen the OSP go on state routes, and they'll just go get the people at the house and say, now you can take that and put it right back in the ditch or where it belongs and not shove it out in the street. That, that's the biggest argument anyway, is every time the plow goes by, they plow in the driveways again, so they got to clean the driveway yep. again. And that's what we do. That, that's what everybody <laughs> does. That, that's yeah. why I say that's the biggest argument. Sure. Uh, and my other question is on Section F of that, it says it damage or injure any person, vehicle, or animal. Now, if a deer runs out in the street and hurts itself, <laughs> what are we going to do about it, Randy? <laughs> just going to collect it and hopefully dispose of, it, <laughs> dispose of it properly. I'll move for approval. Second. Motion to approve as written by Mr. Gorman, second by Ms. Kelly. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Okay, that's unanimous. Thank you. And we read the next ordinance, please. Ordinance 0092230, an ordinance amending Section 351.011 of the Clayton Codified Ordinance is entitled Prohibited Parking on City Streets with Snow Accumulation of Three Inches or More. Mayor, Chief. Council, staff is requesting City Council change the language um, on 351.011, the snow ordinance from three inches to two. And the reason why. Randy, you want to tell them? Sure. Um, we, we kind of are in line with the union on this one. Union changed theirs uh, several years ago from three inches to two inches. The, the fact that we put our snow plows on after an inch of snow um, in the cities and in the areas that Mr. Henning and those live in, that they know what it's like when you're going down Seville, you're going down Skylark, and you got two cars side by side. You can't get the plow through there. It's impossible. That last th that extra three feet of our plow will not get between two parked cars sitting side by side. So whether it's three inches, two inches, five inches, six inches, doesn't make any difference. We can't get past. 
Now, I think on the larger snows, we have no issues with that. It's the smaller snows, when, when it's starting to accumulate, we have real problems with trying to get in between those cars. And Matt and his crew last year, we in, in major snow, made a lot of knock on doors, and we made a lot of attempts to get those cars moved. And Chief was doing it himself in the Philadelphia plat out there. So uh, this will give us a little bit, uh, you know, a little a head warning to let those guys know, you know, get get your cars off the street. Do we, have we ever done the one call? I guess this might, I don't know if Chief would know this, but to the Chiefs, do we ever do a one call during a snow saying, you know, get off the road, we're going to get more than two inches? City manager authorizes that. Okay, cool. So I know because I see them social media posts, I see everything else. I just didn't know if the one call also went out. We traditionally have not done that. So one of the reasons why we don't is you have to sign up for that. Mm -hmm. So you have to sign up for us to get your number. Uh, we are able, and we buy it every three years, we buy the 911 data from AT&T. Uh, but how many of us still have landlines? So if you don't have a landline, we have no access to actually buy your number. Uh, so you have to sign up for it. Right now we have about 1,000 of our 13,000 residents signed up for the uh, hyper-reach system. So if we did this, we're hitting 1,000. So we typically don't do it for those kind of things because it's not that effective. Okay. That would be a, a good thing to make sure we have on social media, though, from what, you know, from the, yeah, well, plus, and I might plus add, the thousand. You know. I might add, too, in our government academy, we actually highlight a lot of these, these problems that we have during snow and ice. Actually, the last probably 20 slides is all snow and, snow and ice issues where, with the plow sitting between two parked cars and showing it can't get through. A lot of those things are actually covered during our uh, academy, so we're getting the word out. I'm getting ready to do a fall newsletter. I think Jack's got one ready now. We're getting ready to do this again, kind of highlight, and we'll actually talk about some of these changes as well. Good. Any other questions or comments on that? Is there a motion? Move for approval. Second. Motion to approve as written by Ms. Kelly. Second by Mr. Bachman. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Okay. That passed unanimously. And we read the final ordinance. Ordinance 0 2231 an ordinance amending Clay codified ordinance section 531.50 entitled Trimming and Removal of Trees, Plants, and Shrubbery to Prevent Obstruction and Protect Public Safety. Uh, I don't think I said good evening, Mayor and Council. I haven't been here for a while. I forgot, to, I forgot the rules. Good evening. Um, one of the things we noticed, and the young ladies actually in our audience helped us out with this one, but um, we, when we were looking at some of the ordinances for our trees and trimming and some of that stuff, we noticed that the, one of the uh, ordinances actually says, I think it's 10 foot above sidewalks, 12 foot above tr uh, the road, and our trucks are 13. So trash trucks are 13 feet, so we had to change that ordinance from 12 feet to 14 feet above the road as far as trimming goes because there's a lot of trucks that are actually hitting them. And we usually get calls when that happens. School bus is the first call and typically then trash trucks and other things. So we had to change that ordinance to two more feet above the street. And thank you. I'll right. move for approval. Second. Motion to approve as written by Mr. Gorman, second by Mr. Henning. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Okay, that passes unanimously also. Thank you. And it looks like we have a total of three resolutions tonight. Resolution R092259, a resolution authorizing the city manager to purchase a tension fabric salt building through Sourcewell Cooperative Purchasing at a price not to exceed $81,450. Down at our station 83, we have the very, very old salt building. As you guys know, about six years ago, we built a new one, uh, fabric building down there for our salt, which gave us a lot more capacity, and it really helped us out, and our, our uh, snow and ice has shown because of the, that ability, um, the improvement, I think. Um, this fabric building will actually replace that one that's in pretty poor condition out there. Um, we've got the dirt ready to go. It needs to be uh, you know, we had to push that over yet, fill it in. This fabric building actually will replace the one that's there now. And we're going to move some of our other aggregates into that building. So we'll have some grits out there. We'll have all of our gravels and everything else. <clears throat> we're going to clean up um, as part of the Salem Street paving project. We will probably pave that parking lot that actually comes off of Salem Street um, as part of the park project at Clayton. And that will allow us to get some of that material off there and get it out into the uh, under the roof because a lot of this stuff has to be under the roof because of EPA issues. 
I want to make sure I'm hearing the right thing. So we're tearing down the, the wooden structure. Correct. Yeah, the, the other fabric structure is fine. Correct. Yeah. Now that wooden structure will probably stay up through the winter. Um, and, and our next year budget, actually, we have to budget for the concrete um, stuff to go around and an asphalt pad to put that in place. But there's a lot of dirt work to be done out there to get that hole filled in because that's a pretty good size hole. Well, it might fall down before then. It looks yeah. pretty bad. Let's, let's, let's hope pretty, not. We, we, it's put our, pretty we put our loader in there. <laughs> Okay, any other questions, Randy, on this? Yes, these, I think it was 70000 is what we... Yeah, we yeah, budgeted 70 some thousand as with everything else. The price has gone up since we got the, the prices, so, but yes, most of that's budgeted through there. Second. Motion to approve by Mr. Henning, second by Ms. Kelly. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Okay, good. Will you read the next resolution, please? Resolution R092260, a resolution to declare surplus equipment available for disposal through sale or auction. Mayor, Council, uh, we'd just like to declare a 2016 Ford uh, SUV uh, with mileage of 180,000 miles. Um, it's unserviceable. It needs a new transmission. We've parted it out. Um, it's gone through the fleet. It's gone through the detective. It's it's time. So we would just like to place what's left of it on gov deals and see what we can get out of it. I'll move for approval. Second. Motion to approve as written by Mr. Gorman, second by Mr. Henning. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Aye. Chief, I did have one question. Um, you guys so satisfied with the uh, Ford SUVs? Because I see some. Did Union go with Tahoe's? Tahoe's are more expensive. Okay. Um, so if we intermix the fleet, um, right now, when we when we buy two, we can take everything out of the other two that we're getting rid of and move it right into the new vehicles. With Tahoe's, we're going to have to start mixing parts, and the Tahoe's are more expensive. Yeah, I just wondered if you guys were still like happy with those. I mean, um, we're very happy with them. We we talked about getting a uh, Ford truck, um, uh, but actually we weren't really saving any money on it. Uh, but the Tahoe's are much more expensive. So, I mean, the initial cost would be expensive, and they're about $5,000 more than the SUVs. So, I, I, you know, we'd have to completely refit and move everything over. So, it's, it's expensive. Okay, I think we already voted on that motion, so that motion passed unanimously. And will you read the third and final resolution? Resolution R092261, a resolution approving specified revision to resolution number R082258, adopted on August 18th, 2022, relative to amendment of 2022 appropriations and estimated resources. Move for approval. Second. Motion to approve as written by Mr. Merkel, second by Mr. Gorman. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Okay, that passed unanimously. All right, that's it for the ordinances and resolutions for tonight. Um, so the next item is our city manager's report. Amanda. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Just a couple items for you this evening. Um, we have our Park and Rec Director here, so I won't go too in-depth because I'm sure he'll want to talk about um, the items that are coming up. But I do want to remind everyone that the Labor Day fireworks um, and festival is this Sunday, September 4th, beginning at 7 p.m. Um, also, the homecoming parade is Thursday, September 29th, 2022, and it starts at 6 p.m. If members of council could let me know by September 16th who wants to be involved so I can RSVP for the group, that would be great. Um, I would like to request a work session on October 20th um, so we can talk about building inspections with all of the new um, buildings that are coming online, the new subdivisions that are being built. Um, we want to discuss the other options that we have outside of the county for building inspection. So if council is okay with that, I'll go ahead and advertise, we can advertise and schedule that work session for 6.30 on October 20th. I already told you, man, I won't be here for that meeting. Okay. <clears throat> and then as Randy mentioned earlier, we will be bringing to council the park paving bid for Clayton Park probably at the next meeting. Um, and then just as a reminder, we turn 25 next year. It's our 25th year anniversary. So staff is starting to think of ideas on how we can celebrate that, maybe rolling something into our Labor Day celebration next year. 
Also, we have a requirement to do a redistrict redistricting study uh, for our wards. Um, it needs to be done by July of 2023, so staff is beginning to gather information so we can get that out and get that done, and we can bring that, that back to council. <clears throat> can we be a part of those conversations when you have the meetings? Yeah, so I don't see why not. Um, and then, so Mr. Koontz is working with the Dayton Daily News, um, and we are actually going to be featured as the In Our Cities in the section of the newspaper for the first Fridays of the month of September. So be on the lookout for that. And then the Clayton Government Academy actually starts September 7th. And um, I think there is still some room to sign up. So if anyone is interested, they can call Jack Koontz at 937-836-3500. And that is all I have for you this evening. <clears throat> Good. Any questions or comments for the city manager? Well, hearing none, um, we'll move to visitors' comments. Is there any? We have some visitors here. Is there anyone who wants to make a comment? No comment? Well, we're glad you're here. Anyone else? Earl, did you say everything you needed to say? <laughs> All right, thank you, sir. We appreciate you guys coming in tonight also, every, everyone coming in. Uh, council, we'll start with Mr. Lieberman tonight. Well, I really don't have much to say other uh, than to once again congratulate our park commission. Uh, you guys are wonderful and, and um, a big part of Clayton. And uh, I want to thank you for what you do. Thank you. Tina? I want to say the same thing and to mimic the improvement of the parks in the community and just helping our community grow with families and events and just getting recognized with what we have featured with Meadowbrook and increasing members to come to Meadowbrook and activities and events and that's a huge part of it too so thank you Parks Commission you guys work very hard and it's very appreciated Thank you. Greg? I, too, want to thank the Park Commission for what you've done. Um, when Jack's gotten up and done his presentations on economic development, he mentions that how the amenities that the community has to offer is one of those things that persons coming into the area expressing an interest as far as the things that they're looking at and if the parks and Meadowbrook and those things are looking at as far as things that they are thinking positive about, well, we have to thank a group of volunteers and stressing the volunteer part that volunteers are always the ones that get overlooked the most because they're volunteers. And, but you're under, maybe underappreciated, but, you know, appreciated from the standpoint of the efforts that you put in, because that's the hardest part. Um, and also, Mr. Gavin, I want to thank you for the information. I think it's things that we have to look at to see what our next step is and be well informed as far as where we're going. So thank you for the information as far as to get started. Mr. Gorman? Yeah, I'd like to thank the Parks Commission also and um, wish everyone a happy Labor Day weekend and hope to see you all Sunday, afternoon, Sunday evening at Meadowbrook at Clayton. I just, um, I'll echo and commend all the parks committee members. Uh, you know, we have a strong police and fire department, service department, staff here, um, and you as your committee provide something that I know so many residents enjoy, um, so many kids. And I know this is something Amanda and the mayor and I were talking about. We are now to the point where so many kids in our community look forward to that event every year. And um, the fact that the bounce houses and everything will be there, um, it'll be stronger than it was during a pandemic. Um, it makes those kids' memories that much stronger. So that's their hometown. That's what they love. Um, and I love that you guys do that for them. So thank you so much. Um, I'll be there volunteering on Sunday also. Always look forward to it. Um, I know my entire family does. I've had residents blow up my phone this week about it to make sure it was still on. So they're excited. So thank you all. Thank you to the staff for that. It's just something that really sets our community uh, apart from like this local area and everyone from the local area comes here. They know that that Sunday, which is now honoring you all, is 
Clayton's like that's our day so thank you um, schools back in session uh, buses are out watch out for them watch out for kids um, walking in plats without na without sidewalks afterwards um, and I just wanted to once again thank the police for being out in the plats I have seen great presence and um, I, I have seen it I've, residents have told me about it so thank you and then um, whatever you guys did for house and valley brook that needed some tlc that was um, not in very good shape it's worked the resident called me this morning and she she wanted to thank the city she was like the zoning officer was there he was working with them um, they've started to pull some of the weeds in the property i guess i haven't didn't have time to drive by it today but it's supposedly looking much better so the neighbor of that property was very happy so thank you thank you sir mr bachman uh, just mainly echo everything else that was said before and you know, looking forward to our you know it's kind of referred to as our super bowl uh here our biggest event uh of the year so looking forward to sunday and hope everyone has a wonderful holiday weekend that celebrates the the one of the greatest forces in the world and that's the american worker that's all i have thank you sir well, I'd also like to commend the Parks Advisory Commission on the great work you guys do. Um, I just think you know everything's been fantastic. We appreciate the leadership and everyone stepping up, and it is a great group of people, and you have a lot of fun, and that's the best part of it. Um, the only other thing I want to say is just kind of what I say every every council meeting is you know, I'm so proud of our our council and our staff here and our residents too that uh, we all work together to make this a great city and we have we have a small but very strong workforce here in, in our group and it really it's start really showing uh, we got a lot of stuff going on uh, some new development hopefully that'll bring in more more businesses and more development I think we're really ma maturing as a city it took us you know about 25 years but I think that's probably pretty normal I don't think that's uh, I don't think that's abnormal at all. So I appreciate all the work from everyone. And that's it. Tim? I'll move for adjournment. Second. Motion to adjourn by Mr. Gorman. Second by Mr. Bachman. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed?